In 1966, Philips, along with other manufacturers, marketed the compact cassette, but at that time, it was not able to achieve the quality that was necessary for music recording. As it was on the royalty-free license, some companies started to improve it. Sony, Panasonic and Teak started to look at different options. The ID was based on reel-to-reel -reel recorders, but they tried to fit the tapes onto cassette while keeping the sound quality performance. In the end, in 1976, L Cassette was born. The name came from L Cassette, meaning large cassette. Compared to compact cassette, the size was about two times larger and contained more and wider tapes. These were half inch, 6.4 mm wide, and run the home reel to reel recorder speed of 9.5 cm per sec. Thus, they got wider dynamic range with better frequency transfer, as in the case of the compact cassette. The L cassette recorder slightly pulls the tape out of the cassette, that helps to avoid any issues caused by the inaccurate manufacturing of the cases. The L cassette also divides the tape onto two halves, A and B sides, one stereo pair on one side, and a control track in the middle of the tape. The control track is about half of the width of audio tracks and more functions have been planned such as cue track, synchronization and track searching but the format never reached these upgrades. Sixty and ninety minutes tape were available and three types. Type 1, Sony SLH polyester tape with back coating, low noise and high frequency response. Type 2, ferrochrome. Type 3, chrome dioxide tape. This was the only version Sony marketed at 180 minutes length. All decks had the option to select any kind of tape, but the tapes also contained holes, so the machines could recognize what kind of tape was inserted. In the middle of the cassette, the tape was uncovered, without protection, so it was important to handle it with care, not to touch the tape. Only the side had a small protector that opened by the mechanism while inserted, alongside the two pinch rollers, which jumped into their place. Most of the equipment was fitted with Dolby B noise filter. The basic version was the Sony EL4 and the middle range was the Sony EL5. These two versions and all other manufacturers similar equipment used two hats. The top range one, the Sony EL7, used three hats and most functions were the same to the real to real machines. Also available were wild remote control, the RM30. There was a portable version, the ELD8. Not many manufacturers supported this format. That means, was not many versions were available, one of these, Vega, was assembled in Germany, but produced by Sony. The LOD D9000, that should be Hitachi, the GVC LD777, Technics RS7500U, and Teak AL700. One of the machines I will show you here is the Sony EL7, the top range with three hats. And this one is the Vega P4950 that is exactly the same as Sony EL7. The only difference is the color. When I said it is exactly the same, it's not accidental. The German manufacturer Vega was founded in 1923 in Stuttgart. The name is shortened from Württembergische Radio Gesellschaft. They produced high quality electrical equipment. But in 1975 they were acquired by Sony and in 2005 were shut down and became Sony Bravia. So back to this machine. Even though it is 40 years old, it still works well and the sound quality is great. It still sounds like the real to real machines. So are you ready for a test? This time free music from YouTube library will be on the test so there are no copyright issues. I will show the original and the recorded samples. They are not will be 100% accurate as both went through on some re-encode. The original...
भी रिकॉर्ड दे दू Okay, so what went wrong? The problem was, it had been marketed in 1976. In 1973, Nakamichi 1000, the first compact cassette recorder with 3 Hz became available that was able to record from 20 Hz to 20 kHz range and those tapes can be played in any other compact cassette recorder. An L cassette deck was extremely expensive even though it targeted the audiophile audience and some studios. In its time there was no any pre-recorded title available on air cassette, but in 2017 Jeremy Aiden's album Blue Wicked came out on minidisc, DCC, CD, vinyl and also on air cassette. So this became the first album ever on the format. By 1979 it had disappeared from the stores and in 1980 Sony stopped manufacturing alongside Panasonic and teak. For some reason the stock left behind has been sold in Finland. Thank you for these machines and shots. Hope you liked it. Please sign up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.